Hello and welcome to the NC Podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I am the founder of NC Real Estate, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors to come and build a profitable property portfolio that completely aligns with their goals. And if you didn't hear it last week, we maybe probably are opening soon and you want to be on the waiting list. So what I want you to do is I want you to click on ncrealestatemembersclub.com, link below, and I want you to sign up for the waiting list because if you're on the waiting list, you will know first when the members club is about to open and there may be some bonuses coming your way. So get excited about that. We are opening soon. So this is a bit of a um, cheeky podcast, shall we say, because actually at the time that this comes out, I am on annual leave. (gasps) Natasha's on annual leave. So I am taking time off between the 9th and the 16th of July. The reason being is because I'm getting married on the 13th of July, which is very exciting. It's come around incredibly quickly. If you remember back, my fiance is Chris, who was on the podcast a number of weeks ago now. And yes, we've we got engaged last July. And so it's been a year in the making and we are getting married. So I thought I'd give you a little quick update on that because I have been asked so many questions and I'm one of these people who tends to keep their personal life a little bit more private, but also because really I've been organizing the wedding as kind of like trying to make it as simple as possible. And so not really talking a huge amount about it has helped me to just keep it calm. I'm not stressed about it. It's actually been quite simple. So let me tell you uh, what's going to happen because by the time this comes out, it will have happened. I will be married, uh, which is exciting. I'm not nervous about this in the slightest, actually. I'm very, very excited. So we are getting married in Bath in the assembly rooms and it's a beautiful location, one that I grew up in Bath and I would go to the assembly rooms and walk around and be like, wow, this is so stunning. So when I got in contact with them, just on the off chance that they might have some availability on the 13th of July, they were like, yeah, sure, you can have your wedding. (gasps) So that was pretty exciting. We're actually getting married at 4 p.m. We're having a late afternoon and evening wedding. Uh, just because I like the idea of having an evening party. We're going to have a buffet dinner. I think we've chosen, what food have we chosen? We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have lamb cleft deco. And we've got stuffed peppers. We've got loads of different salads. We've got a lot of cheesecake because cheesecake is one of my favorite things. Going to be huge amounts of Prosecco. Again, Prosecco is one of my favorite things. Um, And we have got, we're going to have a casino night and we're going to have a band and there's going to be a lot of dancing. And what I am hoping is just that we have the most fun experience with our friends and family and they will come and celebrate with us. I think we've got about 100 people coming. Uh, Just before we get married, the morning of the wedding, we're going to have a a family, close family uh, brunch, which will be nice as well. And the night before, Chris has booked an evening of beer pong in one of the local pubs where we've just got anybody who's coming to Bath on that day coming to celebrate with us. So it's like the most exciting weekend. Again, it's rolled around seriously quickly, but everything has been organized. I am not one for wanting like hundreds of flowers everywhere and decorations that I'm never going to use again. We're not doing that. We have, uh, my flowers are actually um, silk flowers so that I can take them with me around the world. I always thought that would be really nice. I've always been a, um, a silk flower fan because I can then change out my bouquets of flowers in my, in my flat, dust them off and I've got a brand new flower collection. 
That's always been what I've done. Um, and the reason I started doing that is because when I was working in London, one of my tenants was fake landscapes and they did the most beautiful flower bouquets and they were the same price as real flowers. So I would just buy them and hoard them and put them on my desk at work. And every week I'd kind of just switch them around and I'd have a drawer full of flower bouquets that I'd just dust off. So I loved that idea from the beginning. And so that's what we've got for the wedding. Chris's auntie is very kindly making the cake for us. Very excited for that. I think it's white chocolate, milk chocolate, and a vanilla sponge. So three tiers. That will be delicious. I've already said to everybody, I need to make sure that I get a slice of that cake. So make sure that you're wrapping mine up first. If I'm not immediately there, I want a slice from each. And yes, I definitely will eat every single slice that I am given. And that, that is it. That's our wedding. It's just going to be a huge celebration. I'm so excited to see everybody. I'm excited that so many people have said yes. They're coming from all over the world. We've got people from South Africa. We've got people from uh, the US coming over, all over the UK. People are traveling, which I'm so grateful for that they've taken the time out to come and spend that with us. We've got people flying in from Europe. It's going to be awesome. So I'm so excited. I'm sure you'll see some pictures on social media. It's not the sort of thing that I overshare on, but I will put it because I'm immensely proud of this dress that I found to wear. I was never one of these girls who dreamed of having this massive white wedding. It's not necessarily been on my horizon. I'm a bit of a, uh, okay, well, getting married is nice. I love the fact of joining with someone else and creating this family, but it's never been something that I've dreamed about since I was really, really, really little. It's always been something that, okay, it will happen when it's happened, never put any pressure on it whatsoever. And then when it came to choosing a wedding dress, I thought, actually, I want something really, really simple. I don't want um, elaborate uh, sparkles or whatever it is that you put on a wedding dress. And I found it really hard to find a simple wedding dress. And just between you and I, I was thinking that it was going to be super cheap to find a, just a plain wedding dress. Ah, that didn't happen. But anyway, it's gorgeous. And I was thinking to myself afterwards, maybe I might be able to dye it and use it for a different event. But anyway, we'll see how much I fall in love with it. I want to keep it white when, <laughs> when I wear it. So that is it. That's the wedding in a nutshell. It's very exciting. It's coming around quickly. Uh, it's ha It will have happened by the time that you're listening to this. So um, again, have a look at the photos. I hope you enjoy them. I hope that uh, you've liked hearing about this because again, I'm always asked what's going on, what's happening for your wedding. Um, another question that I always get asked, are you changing your surname? No, I'm staying Natasha Collins just because I'm so proud of my name. I've accomplished so much as Natasha Alice Collins and I love my name so much. Um, so I will be staying Natasha Alice Collins, which rightly or wrongly, I know different people have their own opinions of it, but I'm very comfortable in that decision. And Grizz is also very comfortable in that decision too. Uh, it doesn't make us any less of a family, the fact that we might not have the same surnames. We've always been incredibly close. We share absolutely everything else. So from that respect, it doesn't change anything. So there we have it. That is our wedding. Um, I hope you enjoy all the pictures that come out as uh, that come along with that. And normal service will definitely resume next week. But as I said, I am having a little bit of a break this week. Um, and I'm sure it will go by so quickly. And before I know it, I'll be back in the studio recording the next week's podcast and be like, wow, that was over in a blink of an eye. Just before I finish up today, I wanted to tell you a little something about what I've seen in the UK property market and just wanted to give you my thoughts because I've seen a lot of other experts saying, oh, we now might be going through a boom period in the property industry and we may be seeing these hugely flourishing things that are going to come out of the property industry and watch this space because everything's going to be amazing. But I just want to have a little bit of a comment about the fact that in the year from April to April this year, house prices have 
risen by 1.4%, which may not seem a lot. And you can see it across the press that uh, different newspapers are saying, now the average wage that you need to be on to buy an average house in the UK is £56,000. Whoa, is me. Some people are never going to be able to get on the housing market. Oh my gosh, can't believe prices are rising again. It's um, crazy. It really, really is crazy. And I actually sit back and I think I'm going to put a really rosy spin on this because I do not think that we're in a boom period. But I also don't think that house prices rising slightly and us having to earn a household income of £56,000 on average to get a home is that bad. And here's the thing. I think we need to actually be basking in, in the rosy economy that we're in right now. The fact that house prices are gradually climbing as an average. I mean, 1.4% is an average over the whole of the UK but it shows that there's still a willingness to buy. And that willingness to buy and even increasing prices slightly shows that there's still a healthy optimism for the property market. Now, what we do not want is for a boom period to come in and all of a sudden the government say, hold on a minute, how wages aren't increasing as much as house prices are, we need to slow down house prices, in which case, we are going to be putting the interest rates up so that more expensive finance means that people can't afford to buy as much as uh, they once were, which, of course, if finance is more expensive, then the cost of property comes down because we can't afford as much. We do not want that to happen at the moment. And I know that a lot of um, Jeremy Corbyn supporters would love that and he's very much behind that rising interest rates to slow down house price growth. Now is not the time to be doing that because with these small tiny increases that we're seeing year on year and admittedly it is a slow growth period, if you were to then start raising interest rates that would become very difficult for people to be able to stomach but also if you raise interest rates as I've just said, you wouldn't be able to afford to uh, purchase a property at the current amount that it's at, in which case you'd be negotiating below that. You'd be purchasing properties at, at below what they're valued at right now so that you can afford it, in which case you are creating a new market comparable, which is bringing down the value of other properties. Which means that if you're bringing down the value of another property and say they've taken out a mortgage that is a 90% loan to value because they're first time buyers or that's what they can afford and all of a sudden that property has dropped in value, the next time they come to remortgage, they will find that they're in negative equity and their lender will then go, oh, well, actually you owe us more than that property is worth hell no are we putting a new product on this and fix you, fixing you in at a good interest rate. You just have to pay the variable rate that you have just gone on to or because it's now a risky asset for the bank to have a charge over, they're just going to put these interest rates up. So what you could then find is that uh, people are in negative equity and paying interest rates of what, seven, eight, nine percent They'll be then going, whoa, I can't afford this because, what, this is three times the amount that I was paying before when I was on a 3% interest rate. People then start defaulting and we go into recession because it is just a slippery slope. So the fact that at the moment interest rates are nicely low and property prices aren't really rising at a huge amount, although they are rising, and that is the key thing, they are rising, we're actually in a really, really healthy housing market right now. And that's nice. That is a nice place to be in. So I just want you to kind of bask in that because, you know, by the end of the year, we're going to be back in turmoil with, turmoil with Brexit. But this summer, we're in a good place to be. Things aren't really rocking right now. So if you can go out there and be negotiating a nice discount on a property that you buy next, fantastic. If you are looking at those longer term fixed rate products, brilliant. See how long you can fix in for. 
at these lower interest rates and just be grateful for the time that we're in right now. Things are actually okay. I know, I know that we are being reported to every single day that there is this sh shortage of affordable housing. But actually, you know what? It's also not horrendously difficult to get on the housing ladder in the UK. If you think about a £100,000 property and you might need a 10% deposit as a first-time buyer, that's £10,000. And if you are trying to get on the housing ladder, you have to save something. You do have to save something to be able to get onto the housing ladder. You don't just get given things for free if you want to buy a property. You can't just put your hand up and be like, hey, give me a property over here, I deserve one. No, you do have to put a little bit of work in to be able to afford a property. Like no one buys anything for free. It's not like I walk into the shop and go, hey, give me that milk, that bread, I'll have that meat. Actually, just give it to me, you know, for free. It doesn't happen. So as a first time buyer, you have to save something in order to be able to get on the property ladder. Like I don't, I don't know where this crazy assumption is that we should get everything for free. I really don't. Like, I still don't understand how they don't think the property investors still save up. There's always a strategy behind how we're going to get our next property. I, it does Again, it doesn't just, I don't just think, do you know what? It's about time I bought another property. Oh, property, doesn't happen like that. <laughs> we still have to work towards it. So I don't think it's unfair that property prices are rising. Again, it shows a higher market and think, Yes, you struggle to get on the housing ladder, but the minute you do get on the housing ladder, you're never thinking to yourself, well, I wish this market was falling so that the other people could get on the housing ladder. No chance do you ever think like that. You think, gosh, I hope this property market continues to go up so that I make some money here. <laughs> That's like, that is it. So guys, we are in, a, in quite a nice position right now. We are in quite a nice position. I repeat, interest rates are pretty low. House prices are moving slowly, so we're making something on our money. Admittedly, 1.4% isn't like isn't amazing, but you know, it's better than a kick in the teeth. So enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that there's not that much market volatility right now because you know as well as I do, and you'd be it wouldn't be a wise decision to think that the end of the year is going to be calm. Because even though you think, well, it's not going to affect the residential housing market if we leave the EU, just remember we have no trade deals in place right now. Well, we're part of the World Trade Organization. Yes, we could trade with China and um, Asia. But just, just think, in October, we need to reset everything that's going on in the UK. Overseas investors are already looking at pulling out of the UK and overseas investors hold a lot of the commercial stock. As well as that, businesses are going, well, if I need to bring, to increase the cost of goods and I need to pay more for my goods, does that mean that I can afford as much rent? Oh, no, maybe I can't afford the rent or business rates anymore. Oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. So you start seeing businesses then breaking some of their leases or even worse, them just walking out on their leases, which means that commercial landlords aren't getting rent or the rent is incredibly volatile. So they go, I don't want this anymore. And they sell it on dirt cheap. People pick it up or they don't pick it up. And we start getting empty high streets, empty buildings, buildings that, are, can't, um, that aren't sustainable will start to deteriorate. If this doesn't sort itself out, we're in a pretty sticky mess. And if there's, if businesses are leaving, that means that there'll be less jobs, which means that people won't be able to afford the rent that they might once have. So we need to be aware of the fact that things could change and they could change for the worse. I mean, of course, eventually they could be changed for the better, but uncertainty is always a bad time. So just be aware of the fact that we have got probably some turbulent times coming unless we decide not to leave the EU and everything 
kind of stays the way it is, although I would be shocked if our government decided that. But, you know, whatever happens at the time happens. Be thankful that today, at the time of you listening to this, things are all right. Things are okay. Use that to your advantage. Because right now, we're in good times. So use the good things to propel your property portfolio forward. So I hope that's uh, a word of good times for (laughs) this summer. And I'm sure things will change. And I'll let you know as they change. Of course, I've always got my ear to the ground. But today, things are all right. So there we have it. That is today's podcast. My gosh, time off. I'll see you. I'll see you next week for um, another NC podcast. And just remember, whilst you're here, go and get yourself on the Members Club waiting list because I promise you it's not going to disappoint with the things that are coming out. Right, that's it for me today. Have a lovely week and I will see you when I'm back next week. <laughs>